Hey everyone, welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified channel. Today we're going to be taking a look here at this Donner DC20 Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. Thank you so much for stopping back by the channel. My name is Robert McClellan, and if this is your first time here, this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. Now, there's a lot of ways that we do that here on the channel, whether it's the raw track reaction playlist where we analyze some of your favorite songs of yesteryear and talk about how to apply them then to your own productions, or it very well could be all of the exclusive tutorials that are found only here on this YouTube channel. Likewise, we have a monthly song contest, live mixing sessions, interviews with industry insiders, as well as a podcast, all of which are geared to make you a better musician. Now, if all that sounds like something you'd love to be a part of, go ahead and hit the subscribe button while you're here and make sure to enable all notifications by tapping that little bell. All right, so right out of the gate, this particular review is going to be a little bit different from the other reviews that I've done in the sense that I've not actually got the chance to use this microphone before, except for recording the dialogue that you're hearing right now for this video. Now, I do have to say from the few test recordings that I did of the dialogue before I actually hit the record button and said, all right, let's do this. The audio didn't sound too bad, but we are going to have some sound examples here in just a little bit. I'm going to try to record a few different sources to see exactly what we can put this thing up against. Now, normally I would have already went on a five minute long dissertation about the specs of this thing in typical nerdy fashion. However, I do have the spec sheet in front of me, so we're just going to touch on some of the key points of this. The frequency response is kind of hit or miss on all of these microphones, but supposedly it picks up from 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. Likewise, it has an impedance of 100 ohms. It says that it can handle up to 144 dBs on the sound pressure levels, as well as only 1% of total harmonic distortion, which that's really good. Other than that, it is a cardioid polar pattern. You can see here from the polar response chart that it does mainly pick up from the front of the microphone. Now, obviously, this is a condenser microphone, so it's going to require 48 volt phantom power. The other key feature that we want to look at, though, and it's really cool that they include this, is the frequency response chart. Now, according to this chart, it looks like it has a little bit of a dip around 50 to 100 hertz which is not bad that's actually normally where you would dip it out anyway in fact you would probably shave off a lot of that with a high pass filter um, but then it also has a little bit of a bump between 6 to 7k and then it kind of rolls off around 19 uh, kilohertz. So if this is accurate, that's actually a really good EQ plot to have on a microphone. All right, so next let's talk about the packaging a little bit. Now I showed you the box here earlier. The box is really sturdy. It's uh, foam lined, as you can see here, and it came with this little sort of packet here on the top. And at first I thought it was some kind of a promotional material or something, uh, but it turns out it was not. In fact, it was a pop filter and it's a really nice mesh metal pop filter. And as you can see, the stand that I have this currently connected to, the shock mount, actually has a little notch here on the front. Which will allow me to attach the pop filter in front of it and actually attach it to the stand itself. That's pretty nice. Now obviously the one major setback is that it's just a little heavy. Okay, I think I've got it fixed now. Also inside the box you get this cool little stand here. A little metal tripod type stand if you want to just put it on your desk. As well as a nice little mesh lined bag, zipper pouch. And then you get your typical all metal, well, with a little bit of plastic here, housing for attaching this to a stand without the shock mount. And lastly, it comes with an XLR cable that I have attached to the Rodecaster Pro now. Now immediately upon opening the box, I was taken back with the amount of accessories that I got with this microphone and the fact that the cable is actually of really good quality. The build of the microphone is great and most of the accessories are built very well. There was, however, one hang up and that is the shock mount. The shock mount is all plastic. Every single bit of it is plastic. Now I do have to say that it feels like it's sturdy plastic, but it is plastic nonetheless, which means over time it's going to wear and tear a lot faster than an all metal shock mount would. Now one of the side benefits of owning a lot of microphones is that I'm sure I've already got a shock mount that will fit this that is all metal as well. Okay, so I think that about sums up just talking about the microphone, the accessories, sort of a different type of unboxing. Um, let's go ahead and listen to some various sound examples now and see exactly what we can throw at this microphone and how it's going to react to various different situations.
have walked this lonesome road, but I've not walked alone. There is one whom I can place my trust in when I fall, when I fall. Here's my Call upon my knees. There's a flood that never fades or fails, and yet ever flows and still prevails to cover us in, to bring us again into the place that I know we need to be a place of sweet serenity where there in your arms I am safe from. of 